up in a place called Lost Mountain. I wanted to be an archaeologist. Now, maybe that's having grown up in Lost Mountain. I wanted to find things, to dig down through the layers and find places. More likely, it was a kind of foreshadowing, because as it turns out, I would spend most of my professional life finding, protecting, and creating place. I like to think of myself as a people person, but you might also describe me as a place person. Lost Mountain is not a town. There is no post office. It is just a crossroads. It was defined by its geography, the mountain, and a country store that was perched on the side of that mountain. Now, this store is not much to write home about architecturally, but it's where our community crossed paths. Neighbors stopped here for a loaf of bread and an RC and a moon pie. The elders of our community convened here to chew tobacco and chew the fat. Well, Lost Mountain is about 35 miles from downtown Atlanta. So as the dairy farms and truck farms gave way to subdivisions and strip centers, that country store was repurposed as a bank. Now, that's a good thing, but I want to back out and show you Lost Mountain today. This is a classic case of saving the building, but the place was lost. Yes, they found a use for that old store, but what they didn't understand is that it was the mountain that gave our community its sense of identity. And I knew once they scraped away, literally, that piece of the mountain, that piece of my Appalachia, we would never get it back. It still haunts me. And it makes me want to cry. Place matters. So, what did I become? Not an archaeologist digging down through those layers, finding exotic places. I became an architect and community planner, actually adding the new layers, and I hope doing so with a respect and regard for those layers that came before and the value they brought to their places. Because those previous layers they'll echo up to either haunt or inform the layers that we add. Good places are rarely born fully formed. Rather, they evolve over time, bit by bit, informed by patterns of use, because we do use them, because you want to be there. Place matters. So if place matters, who gets to decide? Who gets to create and make place? Well, I would contend that it should not be the sole purview of those trained in design. In fact, I believe to create good places, you must include those who will use those places. The public, the citizens, the people, the you. That's the you and the you. We are all responsible for good places and good design. And you know good places when you see and experience them. Think about the places where you vacation. Think about the places where you spend time with family, where you run into a neighbor, bump into new people. 
the places you care about, the people places. In Lost Mountain, we were not paying attention. And when you're not paying attention, it's very unlikely that you'll get good places. And you risk losing those important places that you already have. Place matters. You have to pay attention to get good places. You have to work hard to protect and create good places. And importantly, you have to believe that you deserve good places to get good places. We make decisions as community all the time. And those collective decisions communicate what's important to us. So what are we communicating with those collective decisions? Well, I know that most of you, probably all of you, have been to a major university town. So which building is bigger, the library or the football stadium? <laughs> what does that say about what's important to us? Okay, I get in Alabama that is not a fair question. <laughs> I could show you a small town in Alabama where the senior center is in the old funeral home. What were they thinking? <laughs> and what does that say about their values and their regard for their elders? I could also show you the senior centers in many of the communities where I have worked that are in cheap metal buildings on the back of the ball field, miles from the heart of the community. That says, loud and clear, we have put you out to pasture. What we build, where we build, and how we build says what we value. An example that epitomizes for me this kind of building to our values can be found in Double Springs, Alabama. Here's the courthouse. What I love about this courthouse is that it's on the highest point of the highest ridge in this Appalachian community. Now, this is not a wealthy community, never has been. And by Alabama standards, this is a very modest courthouse built with available local materials. But it has great dignity and presence. And that pride of place signals the importance of peers coming together to uphold the laws that we have made about how we live together as community. That highest point, those honest materials, in the mid-1800s, those were not decisions made by designers or by community planners. In the mid-1800s, those were decisions that were made by the citizens, by the you. So if I look down the hill along this ridge and across the street, I find Town Hall. I know, the first time I saw it, I really thought it was a renovated 7-Eleven. <laughs> in fact, they built it this way intentionally. So if I look at this beautiful courthouse that my great-great-great-grandparents' generation built, and this town hall that my generation built, I want to ask, who do you think had more money? More collective disposable capital? Well, what we know, statistically, when adjusted, it's about the same, generation to generation. But my great-great-great-grandparents' generation built to last, proudly. They built a legacy, a layer worth preserving. My generation, we used our collective resources 
to build a different and very expensive layer, infrastructure and sprawl. What we build, where we build, and how we build shows what we value. Place matters. It matters to our collective psyche, it matters to our well-being, and it matters to our bottom line. And what we build shows what we value. Of course, there are some really good examples where my generation did believe that we deserve the best and the most, not the least or the cheapest. Good examples where my generation did decide to work for and invest in leaving a legacy. One of those examples is here in our backyard in Birmingham, Alabama. It's a potent example that illustrates how good design, good placemaking, can change attitudes, sense of possibility, and well-being. This is where our city began, our first layers. Trains came together in the heart of the downtown, moving goods and services in and out of this post-Civil War Newtown. But by the mid-1970s, many of those rail lines were inactive. And while trains still moved in and out of our historic downtown, this had become a place of abandonment and blight. That blight reminded us of lost industry, lost sense of potential, and for some, lost hope in a revitalized downtown. But that blight was sandwiched between our powerhouse downtown universities and medical centers and our evolving and robust downtown loft district. So by the early 2000s, the turn of the 21st century, there were some stubborn optimists, like me, who saw that abandonment and saw opportunity. The opportunity for a place. A much needed downtown park, green, a place of renewal, a place where our entire community could come together in a true living room. But first, we needed to ask, is this a good idea? And what would be the components of a place that we and generations to come deserved? What did you say? It should be authentically Birmingham. It should hold up and celebrate our industrial heritage and the railroad in that heritage. Our first layers that gave value to our founding. But you also wanted a place to play. You wanted green. You wanted beauty. You wanted community a people place. So where there had been abandonment and blight, we now have a beautiful downtown park that does all those things and more. It's a place where we can run and roll and frolic and are tickled by design and in a design that reminds us of the ridges and valleys that are our place in the world at the beginning of the Appalachians. Railroad Park was transformative in so many ways. We all do come together here. And that investment in good design and in a people place has helped to stimulate over $1 billion of private investment in our historic downtown. Railroad Park showed us that we could, and oh, we needed that win. And Railroad Park also represented for us, our city, a moment when we realized 
something had changed. We had gone not just from a physical before, but also from a spiritual before to a new spirit of possibility, a spirit of what could be, and a realization that we deserve good design and good places. What we build, where we build, and how we build shows what we value. Place matters. And what we build shows what we think we deserve. Is it the least or the most that we can do for our community, for our people, and for the generations to come? Designers, place people like me, we get the fun and the joy of building our dreams. The community, the you, you get to decide what are those dreams. My challenge to you, please dream big. Become a place person, engaged in the fun, in the hard work, and in the responsibility of good design and good places. We deserve it. Thank you.